This is the newsroom for Monday, March 8, 2021. We're broadcasting to you on E1, Scar TV, NTN, and Tarzi TV in Bartica. In the headlines, close to 364,000 persons have taken the filaria pills. As the largest batch of COVID-19 vaccines arrive in the country, the Prime Minister urges Guyanese not to be skeptical. And we will reach out to every Guyanese to take the vaccine. Why former casino worker Shaquille Rogers quit her job and decided to become a firefighter? Men decide to take a walk in her shoes, literally, to draw attention to the challenges women face. And in sport, we feature a young Guyanese who has an infatuation with golf and science, and President Ali Chide's softball tournament organizers for flouting COVID measures. With the news, I'm Kurt Campbell. We're glad you can join us. First up, with the countrywide distribution of the filaria medication winding down in four densely populated regions, the Ministry of Health is reporting that a total of 363,932 persons accepted the medication to date. The mass distribution drive commenced on Friday the 15th, 2021 in regions 4 and 3 and then moved on to regions 6 and 10. It was launched at the weekend in Region 1 and will also be done simultaneously in Regions 2, 7 and 5. So far we had concentrated on Region 4 and then Region 3. And then we now move the campaign along to Region 6 and 10. So we had the campaign running in these four regions, but as of uh, Friday um, and over the weekend, um, we did the launching, the official launching, but the campaign really starts today. Mm -hmm. And that's going to happen uh, in Region 1, Region 2, uh, uh, Region 7, and Region 5. Mm -hmm. So four other regions are going to join, and um, we'll continue the rollout. As of yesterday, we had uh, 363,000 932 persons who took the tablets so that's um, I think that's that's really good mm -hmm. and with the, the four new regions coming on board uh, we expect to take that number um, up quite higher mm -hmm. we tell you now that a group of Guyanese men in the fields of entertainment business sport media and culture said yes to a bold initiative for men to walk in shoes to raise awareness about the challenges women face it plays on the old saying that you wouldn't know someone's experience unless you have walked in their shoes. Corbin Ballers, Hits and Jams um, director. It was an awesome experience today um, coming out to support the First Lady Initiative for International Women's Day. Um, for me, basically, I would like to see equal opportunities for all women in all workplaces. My name is Gavin Mandanza, I'm a folk musician and the program director of the Rupununi Music and Arts Festival, and I choose to challenge the advancement of women's rights. Hi, my name is Mari Munsami. I'm the group sales manager at the Marit Hotel. And I must say it's a great initiative by the First Lady with having all the gentlemen to represent International Women's Day. Um, it was a bit challenging walking with heels. I don't know how the ladies keep up with it. Hi, my name is Steven Jacobs, uh, national cricketer, also business owner. Uh, I must say it's a great initiative by the First Lady, uh, walk, walk a mile in her shoes. Um, we as men need to understand how, how difficult it is to actually be a woman. Good day, I'm Rob Ferguson from uh, Hits and Jams Multimedia and I choose 
to challenge gender stereotypes. Kelvin Fortune, Chairman and Founder of Youths for Better Living, and I choose to challenge. A lot of times, we as men, we do not respect our women. And today is a simple example of what women go through. And walking in these hills was a really challenging um, time for me. And it shows that a lot of times our women are struggling and we ignore that. Hi, my name is Jude Oven and I'm a musician, singer, producer and I choose to challenge representation of women in all sectors, legal, business, um, the economy, everything is, I'm tired of them being left out. Hi, I'm Avanash Ramzan, sport editor, news anchor at Newsroom, Guyana. I choose to challenge. Celebrating women's achievements is a sign of respect, inclusiveness and an expression of gratitude for their contributions to society. Let's celebrate our women. Happy International Women's Day 2021. The largest batch of COVID-19 vaccines arrived at the Chedi Jagan International Airport Sunday morning. 80,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines were donated to Guyana by the government of India. The vaccines from India come days after 20,000 of the Sinopharm vaccines donated by China arrived here. These donations will greatly assist the country to continue its immunization. The Prime Minister Brigadier Mark Phillips urged Guyanese to take the vaccine. The vaccines from India arrived in Guyana at the Chedi Jagan International Airport early Sunday morning and were received by Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Hugh Todd, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony, and the Indian High Commissioner. The High Commissioner emphasized that the South Asian country did not donate the vaccine with the expectation of any favors in return. The Indian government has pledged some 500,000 doses of the vaccine to the Caribbean region and Guyana is receiving its doses from this tranche. These 80,000 doses are signifying the depth of our friendly relationship with Guyana and also shows our commitment to the world as a first responder to this crisis across the world. According to the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, the local health authorities have also begun looking into India's indigenous vaccine, Covaxin, which has shown efficacy of 81% after the completion of the Phase 3 trials. Trials for this vaccine have also been conducted with children. From the discussions that we are having, while most of the vaccines currently are for adults um, with Covaxin, they have done some trials in a subpopulation of children, which allows us to, to lower the age if we're using that vaccine. So certainly that's one of the vaccines that we're looking at. Since the AstraZeneca vaccine is distributed in two doses, the donation from India will be able to offer protection to 40,000 Guyanese. Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, during brief remarks, urged persons to take the vaccine. Uh, while we thank the government of India, for providing the vaccine, this is an opportunity for me to appeal to the Guyanese people to come forward, come forward and take the vaccine. We have a priority which starts with the frontline workers. We want to vaccinate our uh, medical people who are the frontline workers. We want to vaccinate our um, elderly. We want to vaccinate our joint services and teachers. But we will acquire more vaccines and we will reach out to every Guyanese to take the vaccine. Last week, the country received a donation of 20,000 of the Sinopharm vaccine from the government of China. This, together with the vaccines from India, will be able to immunize 50,000 Guyanese. 
Reporting for the newsroom, I am Isanella Patwo. When the newsroom returns, the inspiring story of a casino worker who decided to become a firefighter, breaking into the male-dominated field. This is the newsroom. Building on the backs of the strong female firefighters before her, Shaquille Rogers defied her family's wishes, left her job as a slot machine attendant at the casino and joined the largely male-dominated Guyana Fire Service in 2016. Choosing to challenge, this is the story of firefighter Rogers. When the swirling ash settles and the smoke clears, many would be shocked to find that a five-foot female firefighter was the one that calmed the dancing flames. Fighting fires in the weight of Guyanese social traditions, sometimes as heavy as her fire gear, Shaquille Rogers was never one to back down. Growing up in a single-parent home between Meadowbrook Gardens and Melanie Damishana on the East Coast, Rogers' path wasn't always an easy one but it made her into the fierce woman she is today. I'm a single mom. I have a six-year-old son. His name is Messiah. As the eldest child, I had enough responsibility, a lot of responsibility. That gives me the ability to start leading by example. When asked about her inspiration to become a firefighter, Rogers highlighted the two toughest women in her life. My mother inspired me a lot. As was, most of the time, a single parent too, my aunt. Her name is June. She's a farmer, firefighter, and the stuff that she came to me every day and talk about the office job, the operation room, saving life, fighting fire. It inspired me as a, a female. If she can do it, I can do it. But it wasn't as simple as that. Regardless of her obvious commitment, those closest to her still had their doubts. No. They didn't want my family. Every time I told them about it, I tell my same former aunt, my mom. They was like, you sure? Firefighter. I said, yes. I said, I'm going to make you guys proud. I'm going to do it. And they said, okay, if you can, go ahead. However, her unshakable resolve quivered during her fire service training, where women are held to the same standard as their male counterparts. Okay. Well, the training was a bit challenging for me. I cried a lot because when I see that all of this I have to do, work hard, even if you feel tired, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. It wasn't easy as a female. I reached at a point, I gave up, I got to quit, but my former colleagues, they was, with, they was there with me and they say, if we came in together, we all live together and you can do this. You have the ability, you have the mind to do this. So I said, okay, good. And with their support, I came through this. Firewoman Rogers' hard work and determination paid off with her favoring the field over administrative work, sharing with the newsroom her first experience fighting a fire. My first experience was at the Gophers fire. Yes, the major fire. It was a bit. I was excited on my way there, but when I really see and get there, I was like, wow, the heat, it was nice, but I did it. Mm -hmm. Her outstanding work ethic has also been noted by pioneering female station officer, Trisha Leander, who plowed the ground for women officers like Shaquille to work in the field. She has presented a challenge to the men in the Ghana Fire Service showing them that women can do as much as men. She has been in the front burner fighting fires, responding with senior firefighters. So for the limited years of service she has, she has presented herself as a woman of standard, a woman of quality, and a challenge to the men. Despite the praises of her colleagues, the opinion that matters the most to Shaquille is that of her son, Messiah. He's so excited. Every morning, he's like, Mommy, you're going to work today? 
Yes, Masayo. Fire service? Yes, Masayo. Okay. When I grew up, I want to be a firefighter. Sometimes he even put on my hat. He want to put on my kids and tell me, Mommy, how are you? I said, you look great as a fireman. So I know he inspired me more. Wearing many hats, Firefighter Rogers proves that a woman can be anything that she wants to be, including a small business owner. So I'm launching my skincare business, that's Cookies Uniqlo. It deals with okay, pregnant women, finished driving baby, stretch mark, getting black spots, yeah, natural. On the occasion of International Women's Day, Shaquille encourages all Guyanese girls and women to choose to challenge, leaving us with this message. Okay, for the women and the young girls, life may throw us hurdles, different challenges, but once you dream of it, you will it and you will achieve it. Don't look at a job and say, okay, I can't do this because it's a man's job. Oh, I can't do this because it's only for men. No, you have the mind. If I can do it, you can do it as a woman and young girls. Chief Executive Officer of the Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry, GBTI, James Foster, on Monday embraced International Women's Day, saying, A gender balanced Guyana is a better Guyana, not just for women, but for all of us. The CEO acting made the comments at the ceremony to mark International Women's Day at the I Love Guyana Monument, Kingston Georgetown, organized by GBTI, Impressions, and the High Commission of Canada to Guyana. Foster emphasized former United States Secretary General Kofi Annan's call, women themselves have the right to live in dignity, in freedom from want and freedom from fear. On this international days, let us rededicate ourselves to making that a reality. He also quoted UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres saying, only through the equal participation of women can we benefit from the intelligence, experience and insights of all humanity. The letters of Guyana were placed on an International Women's Day backdrop to allow persons to sign their pledges in support of the 2021 IWD campaign, Choose to Challenge. About 3,000 Guyanese are expected to be trained and ready to cater to the growing tourism and hospitality sector within a three-year period. President Irfan Ali made the announcement while delivering remarks at the sod turning ceremony for the construction of the new Aden Hotel at Rob and Arnock Streets, Georgetown, on Saturday. The boutique hotel will be the 12th Aden Hotel worldwide and the first for the Caribbean and South America. It is expected to be completed within 18 months at a total cost of US $15 million. The development of this country must be supported by the government, but importantly, it must be private sector driven, people centered, and results oriented. So we have to invest in the right infrastructure. Infrastructure that leads to the opening up of new opportunities, expansion of growth, and creation of better conditions for the people. We are now going to invest in a tourism and hospitality institute. We have to train thousands of Guyanese with a level of investment that is coming in in the services sector, within three years, we have to have at least 3,000 Guyanese ready for the sector. With the lucrative oil discoveries of the shores of Guyana over the last two years, a new dawn is truly beckoning for Guyana. With these very discoveries, overnight, Guyana has become a petroleum heavyweight and a serious topic of discussion on the world stage. Our country is destined for takeoff to new heights, and it is for this very reason our company strongly and unequivocally supports His Excellency's transformative infrastructural and economic agenda, agenda for the nation with our announcement today of the construction of our very first franchised boutique hotel in the center of Georgetown, aided by the world-renowned Best Western Group. A quest to gain as much knowledge as possible is Zani Ross, a woman filled with patience, determination, and diligence. Zani, whose journey has so far taken her to the heights of head teacher of Maria's Pleasure School, had left school with only one subject, home economics. 
However, after leaving every hurdle and eliminating every obstacle, Zani is currently a student of the University of Ghana, reading for her Master's in Education Management and Supervision. Danica Paul spoke to her recently. My name is Zani Ross, Nelly Poul. Um, I've been in the teaching prof profession since 1992, but due to the fact that I wasn't fully educated for the job, I left it in 1996. Zani Liverpool. Well, no, Zani Liverpool was a troublemaker, right? And because of that, there were some teachers who really, what much else should I say, verbally and physically abused me. And because I was bad, as I'm saying, I was bad. I gave them a lot of trouble. And because of that, I failed considerably in my academics. And when I wrote CXC, I left school with just one subject, food and nutrition. I'm proud to say that I left school with one subject, but I, I was determined to get more. And you know, there were some times when I told myself, you know what, I could have done better. But all because my mother could not have afforded, I wasn't able to aspire to the heights I wanted to. During the time when I was financially shaken, I decided to go and seek employment and I, start work, I started working with federal management system and you know first when I applied for the job and I started working I felt ashamed to put my clothes on to go to work. I would dress in the pants and another top but then at one time I said to myself you know what I need to appreciate what I have and from then on I start looking at it from a different perspective and I I did went to some classes during the afternoon right there and then I went on to work with premium security services. But later they went bankrupt. But while I was with them, I worked in the night and I went to college in the day. So that's how I ended up being at college because I, I did college full time, pre-service. And with a little help from the work that I was getting, I was able to finance myself here. I think that a lot of times we are as women, not only victimization, but you know, sometimes I don't know how to explain it. We're not being treated on the same play, play field. We're not being treated on the same play field. A lot of them, they are not fair, not impartial. They take sides. So I want to encourage all of them, all, all our managers who are in that kind of position, not to, you know, try not to do those things to their workers. Try not to put them through those kind of a feeling where they feel victimized or they feel like less wanted, you know, or like their presence is of no use around you. I would encourage them to continue seeking all avenues that will help them to get where they want to be because I believe everybody needs a second chance. And not because you would have left school with little or nothing, it means that you cannot aspire to be what you want to be. So I would encourage any woman who would have gone through what I would have went through to always look on the brighter side. And I would always want to lend a helping hand. I want to do my doctorate because regardless of what I do, I still feel that I haven't done enough. And there is this quest for knowledge all the time. And every time I'm finished with something, I feel like, you know, there is still this hole that needs to be filled. So that is why I keep going, because knowledge is power. This is the newsroom. In a message to mark International Women's Day, First Lady Ari Ali has pointed to the need for all to challenge gender stereotypes and bias which negatively impact the way women are seen and treated. 
Today on International Women's Day, I choose to challenge gender stereotypes and bias. Women desire essentially the same things like men, to make a decent living, to have a rewarding personal and family life, and to move on in the world without causing any trouble. But today, gender stereotypes and bias tend to get in the way of that. And so I want to challenge that. Just as we should not judge a book by its cover, so we should not judge women by their gender. I want to talk about two areas that especially concern me. In the workplace, many women are held back simply because they are women. Asking for a promotion is seen as being too ambitious or even pompous. I want to challenge that stereotype and bias. Promotions should be based not on gender, but on ability and experience. The pay one receives should be based on their work, not on whether they are a man or woman. Let's give women their due. In the home, a genuine complaint is that husbands fail to recognize or even acknowledge the work that us wives and mothers do, and husbands generally fail to do their fair share. Sadly, this is because of historic and cultural stereotypes against women. I want to challenge that. Husbands, the home is not just a place you walk in to fill up. It's not a gas station. So I want to urge that husbands and wives work out an arrangement to share domestic work, especially if the wife goes to work also. There is absolutely nothing wrong for men to do the dishes, laundry, or clean the house. A husband should respect his wife's intelligence and experience. He should understand her needs as a woman, wife, and mother. He needs to understand her physical, emotional, psychological, and sexual needs and meet them. Husbands, ask yourself, do I refresh my wife or repress her? Am I kind and approachable? Or do I tend to be a tyrant, only passing orders? Both husband and wife, mother and father, are responsible for the success of the family. Let's recognize that. I am not saying that we haven't progressed in how women have been treated. There has been many progress. Our country was the first in the Caribbean to have a female president. And today, my husband's cabinet is made up of a group of remarkable women of diverse backgrounds. In the workplace, many women have risen to become the CEOs and leaders of large and small companies. Many of our women and girls have taken on roles once held only by men to the point that in Guyana, we now have a female pilot in the army and many of our girls have taken on jobs in the oil and gas sector. Let us rejoice at what has been accomplished thus far but let us break down the barriers, the stereotypes and bias that still affect many, many of our women and girls. Like I said at the beginning, our women want the same thing men do, a decent living, a rewarding personal and family life, and a chance to make a difference in their communities, our country, and the world. Let's give them that life. Let's all challenge stereotypes and bias. Today's International Women's Day observance brings with it the stark reality of the COVID-19 pandemic and how it has deepened existing inequalities between men and women. In fact, COVID-19 is said to have prompted a sinister shadow pandemic, a global spike in domestic violence. One of the core values of the European Union is gender equality. EU Ambassador to Guyana Fernando Pons Canto sat down with the newsroom to discuss how this value continues to translate in their work here. For the European Union, which is celebrating 30 years in Guyana, although International Women's Day is a day to honor women and their achievements, it's also a day of action, in keeping with this year's theme, Choose to Challenge. Living their core value of gender equality, the European Union continues to be a global leader in promoting women's rights. This is evidenced at the highest levels of leadership in the Union, from the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, to world leaders like German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Finnish Prime Minister Sanna Marin. 
Ambassador Pons Canto touched on how the principle of gender mainstreaming influences the EU's overall work practices in Guyana and the wider world. Well, first of all, um, we integrate gender equality in everything we do. That's what we call mainstreaming. It's a bit of a technical word, sorry about that. Uh, but it, in, in reality, it means something very important. It means, for example, that when we do political dialogue with the government of Guyana, we always integrate uh, gender issues in that political dialogue. And that is very important because this can lead to change. Also, on the development cooperation side, when we do, for example, budget support for Guyana, we also integrate the gender dimension. And we did in the latest uh, budget support exercise, and we will continue to do it. The 2019 Guyana Women's Health and Life Experiences Survey report recorded that one in every two women in Guyana has or will experience domestic violence in their lifetime. This rate is higher than the global average of one in three women. Acknowledging Guyana's unique challenges in the fight for gender equality, the Ambassador Fernando Pons Canto discussed some of the EU's ongoing partnerships with the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security and other agencies, highlighting the EU-UN's ambitious Spotlight Initiative, which aims to eliminate all forms of violence against women and girls. We have this important Spotlight Initiative. Perhaps I can have a, a word about it. Uh, you are aware that uh, this is a 4.5 million euro initiative for Guyana. Uh, which is roughly one billion Guyanese dollars and which is for Guyana. In addition to that, of course, we have the Global Spotlight Initiative for the whole world and that is a much bigger amount. But we are very happy that we can dedicate this substantial financing to Guyana because we understand that Guyana wants to change the situation but needs support and that's why we are there to support. In addition to that, we have, for example, launched, and I'm happy to say that uh, I think it was 10 days ago, I signed the orders to, co to, to start the payments to the Amer Amerindian People's Association and to Child Link, which are two very important uh, civil society organizations, as you know. And in the programs that we want to finance with them in the future, those programs that I just signed, we will integrate a very strong uh, gender dimension and they will, for example, uh, they will be used to promote the participation of women in the decisions of local commun Amerindian communities. It's very important that women lead. This is another of the subjects of, the, of this year's uh, uh, International Women's Day. And through those projects, we want to support the efforts of the Guyanese society to ensure that uh, women can take a more prominent role. I have to say that I am honestly encouraged by, by the plans that I have seen to improve the situation of women. And uh, for example, even on the more symbolic uh, dimension, uh, we know that not only Minister Persaud, but also the First Lady Aria Ali and others are personally committed to this and have been organizing a number of uh, events uh, in this direction. Although the European Union has made significant strides towards gender equality, Ambassador Pons Canto emphasized that much more work needs to be done in Europe and in Guyana. In celebration of International Women's Day, the Ambassador left this final message for all Guyanese girls and women. I would say that to the women and to the girls of Guyana, that uh, don't be shy. It's, um, it's, it's time for women to take leadership and I think to take it in a, in an, in a very active uh, way. You mentioned some women leaders. I, I have to say for the sake of completeness that the president of the European Commission is also a woman. Uh, there she is, Ursula von der Leyen. And this is also something that we feel very proud, but it is work in progress also in Europe. We also have our own pro problems and we still need uh, to work hard on those. Ultimately, I would like to repeat it once again. For me, this is about justice, this is about uh, loving each other, about respecting each other, and about uh, having equal rights and equal duties as well. This is Daniel Swain reporting for the newsroom.
President Irfan Ali has described Guyanese women as strong, driven and committed and declared that more needs to be done to not only promote their interest but to give them opportunities to progress. The President was speaking at the launch of the We Lift Women Empowerment Expo at the Arthur Chang Conference Centre held at the weekend. In Guyana face many challenges, especially single parent mothers, in accessing loans and employment. President Irfan Ali at the weekend pointed out that not just the government, but the private sector needs to have renewed systems in place to help women meet their potential. The president made these remarks at the We Lift Women's Empowerment Expo at the Artichong Conference Center. There is some common theme in relation to what we want to achieve as it relates to women development. One, greater participation. Two, empowerment. Three, enhance livelihood option. Four, a more secure environment in which they can live. Six, five, sorry, stronger families. And six, very important, is ensuring that our institutions, is, en is ensuring that our national framework address in a holistic manner the challenges of women. Along with the president, the launch included powerful pieces by young influencers, including songs and short plays. Minister of Human Services and Social Security Dr. Vindia Prasad also called for gender equality and the participation of more women at the national level. There are several things that we are choosing to challenge. Gender stereotypes, gender bias, the power gap. We are challenging even the media to portray men, women and girls responsibly. We are challenging many persons to ensure that women and girls have access to basic rights, education, and health. We cannot continue to live in a world where 25 years after a declaration was made on where women should be, that we are still pulling out the arsenal and having to fight as hard as we do every day. The gender-based violence app, which was done under the Spotlight Initiative and which is a unique collaboration between the European Union, the United Nations and the government of Ghana, was also launched at the event. The app gives the average Guyanese woman resources at her fingertips if she is experiencing violence or if she would like to learn more about the resources available to counter it. Reporting for the Newsroom, I am Isanella Patwo. When the Newsroom returns, the financial weather and bridge reports along with sport. I'm Kurt Campbell. Welcome back to Newsroom. Now for a look at what's happening in sport. Now Regal won titles in all three of the divisions at the inaugural President's Softball T20 Cup which concluded at the Everest Cricket Club ground on Sunday. More from Akim Green. In the Legends over fifth final, they toppled Parika defenders, while in the Masters, they also had an easy victory over Wellman Masters. However, in the All-Stars, they were deemed joint champions at Speedboat after an abrupt end to the final. Regal Legends restricted Parika to 6-6 for 8 in 20 overs, with the inform Ramo Malone top scoring with 27. But his partners were strangled by tight bowling from Parsan Prasad, who had 2 for 9, David Harper 2 for 12, and Fazim Mohammed 2 for 18. In response, Regal reached 69 for 2 in just 13.1 overs, led by an unbeaten 20 from Eric Thomas, and David Harper came back with a bat to make 70 not out. Mohesh Chunilal, who made 52 in the semi final, made 18, while Ramesh Ramburos and Ramesh Narain both had 1 for 10. Regal won $500,000 while $100,000 went to Parika. In the Masters over 40, Wellman Masters posted a respectable 146 for 6, led by the seasoned campaigner Greg DeFranca, who made 6 to 1, while Azimul Hanif and Royal Reed both made 24. Mohamed Ayoum had 2 for 39, while Roy Prasad had 1 for 30, 
and Suraj Dio Ramdin had one for 34. The unbeaten pair of Richard Latif and Ijaz Mohammed then blazed Regal to 148 for 1 in 14.3 overs. Latif cracked an unbeaten 84 not out while Mohammed made 54 not out, and Al Durga had 1 for 11. The Masters' prize was the same as the Legends. In the All Stars Open, Delroy Perret with 4 for 27 was a chief wrecker as Regal bowled out rival Speedwood for 116 in 19.4 overs with Amir Mohamed being the top scorer with 27, followed by Vikash Daniram with 20. Regal's chase was cut short at 18 for 2 in the 5th over, when the organizing body, Jogsong Softball Cricket League Inc., opted to end the day's proceeding due to persons in the venue being in breach of the COVID-19 protocols. Regal and Speedboat had to settle for an equal share of the $600,000 prize money and were declared joint champions. The three-day tournament was a collaboration between the Georgetown Softball Cricket League Inc. and Guinness Honorary Council to Florida, Ramzan Roshan Ali. For the newsroom, Markin Green. Now, His Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali on Sunday afternoon attended the President's Softball T20 Cup Final at the Everest Ground where he appealed to spectators to wear their masks and to adhere to social distancing stipulations. The President also lambasted the organizers of the event for their failure to adhere to the COVID-19 guidelines regarding social distancing and other safety measures. We all know how difficult it is during this pandemic. And when I look around here, I'm, I must say I'm disappointed with the organizers for allowing a situation where we're exposing each other to this dangerous pandemic. I plead with you to please put on your mask and observe the protocols, the COVID-19 protocols. As your president, I love you and I care about you. And I cannot, and I cannot be in an environment like this and see you expose yourself in this manner and allow you to do it. I'm going to say to the organizers, you have a responsibility. And if you can't take the responsibility seriously, then we have serious problems. We can't build a country on irresponsibility. We have to build a country based on respect, love, and responsibility for each other. You know, it's only when we care about each other that we can protect each other. It is only when we love each other that we can speak frankly to each other. I ask you to think about your families, think about your communities, and think about yourselves. And please, correct the situation by wearing a mask and following the COVID-19 protocols and guidelines. Thank you very much, and God bless you and your families. Now, for one ambitious Guyanese young lady, life has been all about golf clubs and dental instruments, and a fusion of the two has brought her immense success, adulation, and a livelihood. Her mantra that women can achieve anything has been the driving force behind her very existence, helping her to overcome barriers and record noteworthy accomplishments. Joanne Dio is a household name in golf in Guyana. She is a two-time Guyana Open golf champion, a former executive of the Lusignan Golf Club, and a young medical professional. On the occasion of International Women's Day 2021, we share her story, one which we hope would inspire other young ladies to pursue their passion. In the words of Joanne, women can achieve anything. I got involved in golf um, many years ago. I think I was probably the tender age of 10. <laughs> Because my dad plays golf, my uncles play golf on both mom and dad's side of the family, so it's a family of golf. <laughs> so I guess I didn't have a choice back then, but I absolutely love it now. I am excited that I got involved in the sport and um, competition, you know, competing in golf and everything else. It's um, truly been an honor and it's been special throughout all the years. So I think, um, I think the pinnacle of um, my golf is probably in Suriname when I would have won 
the Suriname Invitational in 2018, a few years ago. Um, it was quite an experience because I hadn't went before. I think it was five years prior to that I would have competed in Suriname. And then um, there was a tournament in 2018 and I decided to go because I felt like my game was really on top at the time. And I went and I participated and I got the championship, the A flight, and I also capped the best goals. So it was um, quite special because I don't think that was ever done before for someone to win the championship plus uh, the best girls. So it was quite special for me. Oh, I think, um, I think it's been a challenge throughout all the years because we've only had a few females who um, play golf. Um, because for that particular reason, we're usually, I don't want to say the word forced, but we're usually forced to compete with the guys um, on a weekly basis. Um, so that in itself, I think um, we, were, we would be set aside from the guys when we have the big tournaments, like the Gain Open, and some special tournaments too. But for me particularly, I like competing with the guys. I like being in competition with everybody else, not just the females. So when you win a tournament, you know you would have won uh, from the entire field, right. so it's um, quite special to uh, compete with. Um, golf, golf is a sport that it can teach you so many things. You know, patience, um, balancing your priorities, um, having a lot of discipline as well. It involves a lot of um, immense mental discipline and also long periods of training. So um, it sort of teaches you in that aspect to be very disciplined. Um, also, golf is not my only passion. I am um, a dental surgeon by profession. I practice dentistry. I started practicing dentistry in 2017. Um, I think what lured me into the profession is a number of factors, including my love for science as a child. Um, growing up, I was always excelling um, in the science area, particularly throughout all the years. Um, so it was my love for science, and also my dad was really pushing me from a very young age because he wanted a doctor. <laughs> and he had mentioned whatever field I chose, you know, that was um, okay with him. So I kind of went ahead with that and ran with that. So it was basically because of that I'm in my profession today. And also because with dentistry, um, basically the joy of seeing a patient really happy after they would have had um, treatment done and the joy that it brings them to have good oral hygiene and a healthy smile. Um, my advice is basically to keep striving, keep pushing for your goals because I believe that women in particular are capable of accomplishing anything. Um, I believe that when you empower a woman, you empower an entire community. So um, I believe that you know women are amazing beings that are capable of accomplishing anything we put our minds to. So happy International Women's Day 2021. And with that, we've come to the end of the news for this evening. Of course, you can find updates on these and other stories on our website, newsroom.gy, our Facebook page, and Instagram. On behalf of the entire news team, my name is Avanash Ramzan. Thanks for watching. Be safe. See you next time.